This is another one that is really, really good. You would always apply your primer on top of your moisturizer before your foundation. Key thing you need to remember, over moisturizer, under foundation. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, which is all about educational beauty. Now today's video is all about primers. Which primer do you need? And do you need it at all? So I'm gonna go through all of that with you. I'm also gonna show you the primers that I use, why I use them, and also the primers that I would keep with me in my pro makeup kit when I'm working on different clients. Now, before we head into the video, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. And you can also catch me over on Instagram if you wanna check out what I'm doing when I'm not filming for YouTube. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so let's talk primers. Obviously, I don't have any makeup on because I'm gonna be showing you exactly how I apply my primer. Now, I'm gonna go through different primers with you. I'm gonna firstly go through the primers that I use because I don't necessarily stick to one primer and I don't really think most people should need to stick to one primer or would need to because the reason being is your skin is different every day. There are some days where you just don't get enough sleep and it really affects how your skin looks and therefore you need to prime your skin to make sure that you get that really nice smooth base. I'm also gonna go through other primers with you because obviously you guys will all have different types of skin types so I want to go through the different primers that I would usually carry in my kit for my clients because obviously most of the time I don't know what that person's skin is going to be like I have a very large chunk of my clients which are loyal clients that I work on on a regular basis so I already know what I need to take with me for them but there are some clients which are new clients and, and especially when I'm working on celebrities because I don't necessarily work on the same celebrity all the time because obviously I because of living in Dubai, I usually get most of the US celebrities which are coming out here on holiday, so I don't necessarily work on them all the time. I need to kind of like take along a good selection of primers so that I can figure out what their skin type is like when I see them and make sure that I've primed it perfectly for that amazing flawless base. So I wanna go through that with you because I feel like that's something that you guys may not necessarily have access to in terms of a professional makeup artist. And obviously as a pro makeup artist, when we go to different bookings, there are different things that we use that, you know, there are different things that we take with us so I really want to just be transparent with you guys and tell you so that it you know just in case it helps you guys now let me explain my skin type I, I have to deal with kind of textured skin I have a lot of textured skin especially around my cheek area my forehead seems to be okay uh, chin generally seems to be okay but I do have a little bit of texture around my jawline still sometimes I do break out and that's usually down to my diet so I can feel that I've kind of broken out a little bit and my pores are a little bit more enlarged than usual so that's how I'm feeling my skin is feeling very dull, very tired, and large pores. Clearly the dark circles are worse than usual. We're gonna deal with that on a different video. So because of that, I wanna make sure that I use a primer. Usually I would use two primers, and I'm gonna explain how you can do that. Because a primer doesn't mean that you just use one primer every day and that's it. You've gotta make sure it's actually solving a problem for you. So there's no point getting a hydrating primer when you are already using an amazing moisturizer, and then on top of that, you're using a hydrating primer. If it does smooth your skin and it's great for a makeup application then that's great it's doing something but otherwise it's just an unnecessary product you know so for example your moisturizer might actually be enough so a primer isn't a moisturizer for you if you need extra hydration and your moisturizer generally is you know maybe not a very rich very hydrating moisturizer then yeah you can go in with a hydrating primer and that it adds that extra boost of hydration for you but if you're using a very good hydrating moisturizer anyway, and your concern is, you know, making sure that you get a nice smooth base ready for makeup application, then you kind of want a smoothing primer. You just need to figure out, right, okay, if I want a smoothing primer, why do I want a smoothing primer? Clearly, because you may feel that you've got slightly bumpy skin or textured skin or open pores, like enlarged pores. Maybe you need to just smooth it over, right? So in which case, sometimes a pore minimizing primer would work well, because as well, as much as it's called a pore minimizing primer, it also helps to smooth the skin so don't get too confused with you know the fact that these brands use a specific word to call it you know that's what the name of that primer is it may help to solve other issues as well I use like I said two primers sometimes and the reason for that is because I might need something which is going to help to grip my foundation but at the same time I want to make sure that I am kind of smoothing out those enlarged pores so that's where I would use two on a day like today with how my skin is feeling I would use two now I don't have anything on so I'm going to go straight straight in with my moisturizer first. I'm just applying my Wind Medina Dew 
moisturizer. I've literally just kind of like finished this moisturizer today. It's a good moisturizer, very hydrating. So that's why I've just smoothed over my skin right now. Now I don't go straight in with my primer. I wait a little bit because I really want this to kind of like sink in and otherwise it just all gets a bit gunky because there's just so much product that's just layering up on the skin. So I'm using my Ula Henriksen Wrinkle Blur Eye Gel Cream. And I'll be honest, usually I use Clarins Eye Lift, but sometimes I forget by the time I start filming and it's in my bathroom. So I don't wanna like get up right now because <laughs> I'm in the middle of filming. So I'm just gonna use that one and it's, you know, nothing's gonna happen if you use a different eye cream one day. So, okay, that's done. Now I've allowed my moisturizer to kind of like settle down. My first primer is the Milk Hydro Grip primer i absolutely love this primer now sometimes i get comments from some people saying you didn't put sunscreen on i'm going to be completely honest i know everyone's going to have a different opinion to this right i i can only be honest with you and i, and I feel like that's what makes this channel quite realistic and just transparent because i'm not going to lie to you and say to you that i use sunscreen every single day i know people are probably like gasping right now but i don't i don't use it every single day don't get me wrong i'm not under any illusion illusion that you shouldn't be protecting yourself if you're sitting in the car or you know it doesn't mean that just because you're enclosed in a car that the sun can't affect your skin I'm well aware of that when I know that I'm going to be indoors all day like I know that I'm literally just because the car is parked inside so I know that I don't have to walk outside so I'm going to get in the car obviously that's still better than like actually walking outside and being in the sun but I still do, do know you know that it does affect your skin if I know that I'm going to be inside all day I will just get in the car go to where I need to go to and I'm gonna be inside all day. I'm not gonna be outside at all, like, no, like especially if I'm in a mall or something. So in that case, or if I'm shooting all day in a studio, I don't put sunscreen on. Only reason being is because sometimes I need a, a primer that actually does really grip hold of my makeup and keeps it on all day. Whereas if I know that I'm gonna be outside or I'm gonna be kind of like, I don't know, there's a lot of windows, so I am gonna have, you know, I'm gonna be exposed to the sun in some way or form, then I will always put my sunscreen on. And if I do use my sunscreen, then the best one that I can recommend, currently there are two actually that I use. One of them is is the Charlotte Tilbury Invisible U UV Flawless Poreless Primer, it's SPF 50. And then the other one is the Sarah Chapman Skin Assist Skin Insurance SPF 50. If I feel that my pores are a little bit too enlarged and I need sunscreen, then I'm gonna be using this. If I feel like my skin is pretty normal today, you know, pores aren't looking horrendously big, then I'll go in with this one. This one helps to kind of smooth over the the enlarged pores so and this is just generally a you know enhances the skin a little bit gives you a bit more of a radiant look but also does give you that SPF realistically on the days that I know I'm not going to be exposed to the sun in any way then I will just use my milk hydro grip primer so I've got that on my fingers and I just basically smooth from the center outward I don't rub it in I just smooth it over the skin because it leaves almost like a tacky finish all over the skin now that I've put that there I'm going to let that settle just for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to go in with my other primer which is going to help to just kind of kind of deal with these open pores and anywhere where I feel like it's just a little bit too obvious. Now I'm going to go in with one of my favorite primers. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Pore Minimizing Primer. And do you know what? I will never forget. Do you know how I who sold this to me? Not this exact one obviously, but it was years ago when I went to New York with my husband and I went into the Sephora and this is before I started my YouTube channel. I remember there was this guy working there. He basically said to me like what are you looking for and uh, I didn't actually know what I was looking for I, I just wanted to be in Sephora and just shop you know so I was like well and he was like oh you know I really like your makeup I think I had like a full face of makeup and he was like I really like your makeup and he had a full face of makeup and I was like oh my god your makeup looks so good and he was like no yours does and then I was like okay I really need something which is going to help me to kind of like keep it on because I live in Dubai and you know it can get really hot there so he was like oh my god I need to show you this primer it's amazing he goes I've and this was late afternoon like probably like five six in the evening probably like early evening he said I've had my makeup on since seven this morning and I was like no way it honestly looked flawless and he was like you need to get this you need to get this because it's amazing he was like I it literally keeps my makeup looking fresh and you don't see any pores like slowly becoming enlarged throughout the day you know sometimes when you put your makeup on first and it looks amazing and then later on in the day you're like where the hell did these open pores come from this helps to just kind of like delay that really so he's the one who sold it to me and i don't know why it just stuck with like he stuck 
with me. Like anytime I use, like, well, it's not every time I use this, I don't think about him, but you know, I do always remember that it was that guy in Sephora that sold this to me. And he was just a really good sales person. <laughs> he was really good, but he was, anyway, that's just a little story for you. So yeah, what I do is I get that on my finger and then I basically smooth this over and hopefully you can see how that kind of like really mattifies the area and also just almost like blurs the texture you know so you can't really see the like obvious texture on the skin so i literally just lightly smooth that over around the nose a little bit there you go i i it's very kind of targeted priming you know i don't just like slap it on everywhere and if you've already put a, pl a primer on a, you know something which is slightly tacky you want to make sure that if you do put another primer on especially something which is pore minimizing and slightly pasty you want to make sure it's a very small amount and you just target those specific areas and that's it and that's what I've just done that's my primer done now what I want to do is I just want to kind of like add a very kind of light foundation just so that you can see how that kind of looks this is actually the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude True to Skin Natural Glow Foundation this is my shade in 6.5 now I always use a sponge for my foundation sometimes very rarely I use a brush it depends on the type of look that I'm kind of going for with this I'm going to use my fingers I just feel like I've had some of you saying you know I use my fingers how would I apply with my fingers so I just wanted to show you you know but otherwise I would usually just use my sponge so don't think this is like my new way of applying foundation because it is I just want to like make sure that I really, you know, answer questions for all of you guys as much as I can anyway. Okay, I've just put on a little bit there. If I, if you do use your fingers, then I don't really like to go all in because it's just really messy. What I will do is just smooth this over. You can see it's going from the inside outwards. Personally, I, I honestly prefer using a sponge because I feel like you can really kind of like get in everywhere and it is kind of like less messy than using your fingers. But you know, I just wanted to like show you if you did, this is, if I had to, this is how I would use it. For all of you that do use your fingers, I really hope you try a sponge because I feel like it's gonna be life changing for you. Now I'm just gonna use this foundation, but with a sponge for my lids because I don't even know how anyone would actually use their, their fingers for this area. But just gotta be honest with you guys. I'm just gonna add a little bit of concealer. So this is my, Hourglass Varage Concealer. I'm actually using my Charlotte Tilbury complexion brush to apply this. Just gonna put, I only, I literally just want a super light coverage because I just want to show you like with the primer like how it looks, but more of a natural finish. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation in 290 and just gonna like go over the eyelids, only on key areas. And I wanna mattify, you know, the areas where I I have open pores because I just want you guys to see how it looks after you've put your primer. So I know I fully haven't kind of given myself amazing coverage, but I'm not too fussed about the foundation coverage. I just really want to show you how like your foundation sits on top. So I'm just gonna go along this cheek area here. Okay. You can still see things like my freckles kind of coming through. Okay, so you can see with a little bit of foundation on, tiny bit of concealer and a little bit of powder, exactly like how my skin looks now. So you can see it's definitely a lot more presentable. It isn't looking as tired and dull. Let's ignore the dark circles at the moment. But generally my actual skin isn't looking so bad. It looks a lot better. If I had gone in with my foundation, I hadn't put any primer on, I feel like I could, I would still be able, my pores would be a little bit more visible. It just gives you, primer is there, is just to give you that extra helping hand and just kind of like eradicate any kind of small issues that may have popped up it, on that specific day or during that period of time. So the other one that I use sometimes is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer. It's a great primer. What it does is it helps to just kind of like even your skin. It gives a very soft, soft focus effect. So it's very kind of like, it blurs the skin a little bit. It really does help overall. So this is something that I would use all over my face if I just, maybe I don't have time and I just want to use one primer. I don't want too much product kind of like layered on because obviously I've used two today. This is another one that is really, really good. You would always apply your primer on top of your moisturizer before your foundation. Key 
thing you need to remember over moisturizer under foundation okay so what do you use if you have mature skin or if you have dehydrated skin in, in that case i would always use a hydrating primer so something like the laura mercier pure canvas primer we, you, they have different ones so i would use a hydrating one so if i feel like the mature skin is quite mature like quite wrinkly quite dehydrated then i would go in with a hydrating primer and that is basically because mature skin dehydrated skin can be a little bit more dry sometimes not visibly dry but sometimes you know it, it has you need that extra boost of hydration so that's when i would use a hydrating primer a hydrating primer i don't know i feel like i can't say it a hydrating primer will basically help to kind of like give you that extra boost of hydration but also help to keep your makeup on for longer so that's ultimately what a hydrating primer does it gives you breathable skin so your skin doesn't feel too tight under makeup or dry or feel like you know it's like kind of really dehydrated it, it's exactly what that extra boost of hydration does it gives you that kind of like nice suppleness to the skin that softness to the skin now let's say you have textured skin which primer should you go for i would then suggest a blurring primer because it's great for people who have textured skin like imperfections or obvious open pores things like that i would always opt for a blurring primer because a blurring primer basically usually has kind of powders finely milled into the primer which helps to kind of give that blurring effect so a good blurring primer we have a couple we've got the Laura Mercier pure canvas primer again but the blurring one their primers are really good Laura Mercier because her primers are silicone free so those are really good and a couple of them are SPF 30 not the blurring one from what I know I might be wrong so that's one that I feel like helps to kind of extend your makeup wear so it lasts for longer but it also gives you that nice blurring effect and smooths your skin over as well and another one like I mentioned earlier is the Smashbox pore minimizing primer and the Shiseido blurring primer that's also another good blurring primer now what about if you have dull tired looking skin then you want to opt for a illuminating primer so illuminating primers you can use a few different ones so you've got the illuminating primer from Laura Mercier you also have the Ula Henriksen banana bright face primer the good thing about the Ula Henriksen one I don't know if I'm saying that right but I do apologize if anyone is from I don't know where he's from I might be wrong is he from Denmark I don't know if you know let me know in the comments below because I have met him once on a, at a PR event, he came to Dubai like before COVID, COVID, and he's so funny. He's the nicest guy. He's just so, so much fun and energy in him. It's insane. It's like, God, do you wake up like that every day? It's, it's amazing. But yeah, but basically he has a really good primer as well. It's got vitamin C in there. It's brightening. It helps to kind of like, it's good for the skin as well. And it helps to just brighten up and give you that nice kind of like radiance to the skin. You also have a couple more. So Smashbox have a radiance primer with hyaluronic acid. So it also helps to give you that kind of like boost of hydration. But along with that, it does give you that really nice radiance and you'll always find that these illuminating primers have like almost like a pearlescent finish to them because that helps to obviously the light reflects off of those pigments and it helps to give you that nice radiant finish so yeah there's quite a few primers that you can get in terms of get, giving that nice kind of illuminating finish now what if you have redness and you suffer from a lot of redness in the skin then what do you do then you can use a redness corrector so it's almost like using a color corrector for the skin but it's in the form of a primer so it helps to keep your makeup on long but it also does have that kind of green pigment in there to give you that overall color correction to the skin so that's great if you have red skin you can get kind of like more targeted more very specific primers Laura Mercier does a great selection for the obvious skin concerns but Makeup Forever do an amazing selection of primers for a bit more kind of like specific skin concerns so like they have a grayness reducer if you feel that your skin is looking very gray then you can use the grayness reducer gray I can't even say it grayness reducer which almost is almost like a, a radiance primer as well but it's basically similar to that kind of like a redness corrector which has the green in there to color correct you have the orange in here to help correct any grayness and also if you're if you're quite veiny and quite bluish in the skin because you can see some uh, veins coming through this is also great for that as well it really depends on what you're looking for there is such a vast array of primers available depending on your skin concern so I would really think about what your concern is what do you have what's really annoying you with your skin and what do you feel like you can still see coming through when you when you've applied your makeup and maybe that's what it is that you need to kind of like eradicate or help help to kind of like like for example you need a solution for that so in which case if you put your makeup on and you feel like I can still see really obvious open pores then quite clearly you need a either smoothing or blurring or pore minimizing primer really think about what it is that you need and then hopefully you'll be able to figure out what primer that you need to use for 
for your skin. All of these primers are primers that I have used either on myself or either in my kit, in my makeup kit for my clients. So I will only recommend to you the products that I know that I have used, again, either on myself or clients, because I genuinely feel that they work and I feel like they're products that I think that you're gonna love. These are all products that I've used. There probably are a few extra ones out there, but I really don't wanna overwhelm you with more primers. There are, what I mean by a few extra out there is there are a few more primers that I probably do have within my kit, but I don't wanna really overwhelm you. I just wanna show you a couple per concern so that you can pick which ones you kind of want. I really do hope that you can kind of like pick the right primer for you. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to tell you that this is a primer you need. Based on everything I've shown you, I am sure that has kind of like helped you to narrow it down into like what primer maybe you need for your skin. Maybe you already have it and you just don't know, you didn't know how to use it, you know? So hopefully now you've seen how you can use it too and hopefully it's solved that problem for you. Well, I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about primers at all, let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.